Is your desire satisfied? One of the things that happens in my surroundings as spiritual people is the word, words have, big words some have, times have a lot of meaning, like love, and especially the word ego. And I stopped getting into arguments with people about it, but I see, and I, through your teachings, there's like creativity and there's areas of spirituality where the ego combines. There's different crossings of, of wanting to express yourself as an artist. At the same time, people will, might be saying, your ego is hurting us, you know, how you're behaving or something, or an interior decorator. So I'm wondering if you, you want to comment on maybe even a new word for ego to help us. Well, we would like to take the word ego and talk about it from a receptive mode or from a not receptive mode. So let's say that you've sifted through a lot of data and you've come to lots of conclusions about what you prefer. So you have a lot of momentum going. So you feel strongly about this and things are manifesting around you that support it. Your ideas are supported by manifestations, which just perpetuates stronger and stronger appreciation. So let's say you're in that state of awareness about something, whether it's sports or fabrics or art or decor or anything, cars. So you have strong momentum about it and you are often in the receptive mode. So in the receptive mode, oh, those ideas just flow. And the more receptive you are, the more ideas flow and the more fun it is and the more brilliant things are. And mediocrity is left far behind because you're out there on the leading edge, on the cutting edge. So now let's take that same ego, which all we mean by it is attention to something and then the ensuing law of attraction responding to it. Let's take that and that ego, not in the receptive mode. Now, you still have strong opinions, but your opinions are often not inspired. They're sort of found, but now there's not cooperation. Now you're trying to defend yourself all the time. Now you're using more words than you want to, and you're trying to convince others, and you're explaining yourself all the time. And so when people talk about ego, in the beginning, when the word ego was introduced into this, conversation people were almost always talking of ego as it's a bad thing i need to get rid of my ego and we said oh your ability to focus you came <laughs> deciding to sift and sort you came to find your own opinions about things but when you find an opinion that harmonizes with the opinion of your source so you are in the receptive mode oh you know as you look around the world you can see those who don't split their own energy and the power that comes to them even if you disagree with what they're saying you can see the power that comes to someone who's not splitting their energy all over the place yes yes, yes, yes. maybe the new word for ego is a state of focus and maybe the defining of that is state of focus in the receptive mode or state of focus not in the receptive mode there is nothing more uncomfortable than to be with someone that you've decided is egotistical because they are trying to convince you against your will that they are right. So we want to say that the true ego that you intended, that you bring with you from non-physical, is creating your own reality and staying out of everyone else's business and spending no time trying to convince anybody else of anything. Right. Yes. Stay in my own way. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Helpful? Yes. Thank you. Could anything possibly be left undone? <laughs> You've got that look like, yes. Thank you. Can you speak a little bit about the consciousness of animals, specifically ones that come here and endure lives of torture, and also the consciousness of plants for the first part? Let's talk about all of that in relationship to human, just as a sort of basis of understanding. Every consciousness comes forth for the pleasure of being here, for the pleasure of leading edge beingness. And all consciousness 
that is within these physical bodies, whether you call it a human or a beast or a plant, all consciousness that is within this physical embodiment is energy that came forth with intention and with positive intention. The difference between human and animal, the only difference really worth talking about is that human comes with more intention to sift and sort and decide. We didn't talk about this here today, but it's really good that you've brought it forward because this matters in the context of everything that we've been talking about. The creative process of which you are all an essential part is three steps. The first step is ask and life just causes you to do that. So humans and animals and plants, you're all because of the experience that you are living, you are all asking every cell in your body is asking every particle in a piece of dirt is asking everything is having exposure to contrast and everything is consciousness that is asking so human asks and animals ask plants ask and as all of you ask you're asking for improvement for more for expansion and this vibrational reality becomes as a result of your experiential asking so all of that is step one when you ask law of attraction and source deliver the answer when you ask there is a vibrational becoming that is instantaneous and then the third step and really the most important one is you have to find a way to be a vibrational match to what you're asking for so humans are excellent at asking that was really what you are most born for you're mostly born for the defining focused brilliant consciousness opinionated self-serving selfish asking that's why you have the ability to examine and to study and to think you ask with such intensity animals ask too but not with that kind of intensity so human is really excellent at step one and source is doing step two for everybody human we love you so much you sort of suck at step three <laughs> it is playing with you. it doesn't come so natural to you these days animals step three they've got that down so they don't ask with the intensity so they don't get all out of whack vibrationally but they are in a greater state of allowing and because of that they are not suffering in the way that humans define them humans want to superimpose their intentions and their desires over everyone and everything and if you want to know what we mean watch an animated film and listen to the things they tell you the animals are saying <laughs> they're not saying those things <laughs> what they're saying is good food feels good like this want more in other words <laughs> They're not into these psychological things that humans want them to be a part of. And so they don't experience the discord that humans want to lay on them, you see. So we would like to say to you that a large amount of the animal suffering that you are worried about, and we get it, the animals aren't feeling. And if they were, they wouldn't come forth so much population of animal experience wouldn't be happening those that are bred for food for example they wouldn't even be here having the experience of being physical if it were not for that intention going on so don't misunderstand us we are not encouraging anyone causing suffering about anything or for anyone but we want you to not worry so much about the creation of others even the creation of the beasts of the planet helpful yeah thank you also i really appreciate your perspective on croaking and i'm wondering two parts first of all has esther ever misinterpreted abraham and when esther croaks is there anyone else in line to be the interpreter <laughs> Well, all of you are ready. Because of the words that Esther has found, there are millions of you who now understand what alignment is. And so you are no longer needing someone to interpret. You've always had this flowing to you. 
and as you are paying attention you now are receiving on your own you see which was the whole point of all of this words don't teach it's only life experience that teaches isn't it and so what was the first part of your question has, has Esther ever misinterpreted her ability to translate with precision today is better than it was yesterday and yesterday was better than the day before and the day before and the day before in other words because her alignment with us is more consistent there was only one time ever that Jerry asked Esther to get Abraham that she was unable to bring in Abraham and it was the day the neighbor's dog got into the chicken yard and killed some of her precious chickens and Esther was so distraught she could not find us we were right there with the chickens <laughs> but she could not find us <laughs> so as far as the interpretation goes we would far rather that you find your own interpretation Esther was not born to interpret for you Esther was born to interpret but when you give her the responsibility for what you were born to do then after a while it gets a little out of whack doesn't it you can become dependent on something that you need not be dependent upon there is not one of you who is not an extension of source energy and there's not one of you whose source energy is not aware of and there's not one of you who is asking that source isn't answering but you are in varying degrees of receptive mode the reason that Esther was a good receptor is because she had not made up her mind against anything at the time that she began meditating and received us and she had a man next to her who was insatiable about the questions that he had he had so much that he wanted to know and so they were a very good coupling because he had strong 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 desire and Esther was a bit like the beasts sort of non pushing against anything and so that combination allowed a very wonderful unfolding for all of this now these days really wouldn't matter what was going on Esther could focus herself into alignment with us and many of you can do the same we have enjoyed this interaction this has been a leading edge conversation among leading edge creators and the vibration of your being is different than it was when you came into this room what's coming next will be better for you and your receptive mode is much more accessible to you as a result of the conversations that we've had there is no homework and there is no way of getting this done and there's no way of getting anything wrong it is our powerful request of you that you look for things that feel good and find them and look for things that feel good and find them and show yourself that you are able to be the witness of all that you've put into your vortex there is so much love here for you and for now we are complete